If you're watching this video, then mathematics is probably a subject you're struggling with a little. Lucky for you, there's one type of people who are good at maths, which many people in the comments have already pointed out, and that is Asians. Hey everyone, my name is Shane and I graduated with a 99.90 ATAR and achieved 99 in extension 2 and extension 1 mathematics. I was also one of 100 students in Australia invited to participate in the Australian Mathematics Olympiad. The first thing you need to understand about mathematics is that it's a subject that continuously builds on previous content. What I mean by this is a lot of what you learn in primary school leads to what you learn in high school, in the junior years, and then what you learn in the junior years goes on to what you learn in the senior years. For example, you can't learn algebra without knowing and understanding the order of operations, and you can't do much calculus and trigonometry without a strong understanding of algebra. This means it's essential that you don't fall behind in terms of content of what you should have learned by which year. This means you really got to be continuously on top of your shit. No lazing around and definitely no saying I'll learn it later or learn it next year. You have to learn now and if you're behind you got to catch up quick otherwise it'll just get harder and harder. This is something Asians have an advantage with because a lot of the Asian kids start tutoring from an early age. Many kids like myself even did tutoring in primary school and definitely continue this in high school so we make sure we're on top of everything as we spend a lot of time learning maths in the classroom at school as well as in tutoring centers. As an Asian kid back in the day, my parents made sure there were no holes with my learning. For me, back in the day, I did a lot of practice, 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 and I also did a lot of memorization. I memorized the squares up to 20, and also all of the multiplication tables, and made sure that was very, very solid. From my mom and dad, I also got a lot of tutoring and homework help to make sure that any concepts I was struggling with, they would explain it to me, especially given that I was young and these concepts weren't too difficult, made sure I fully understand it, which means I definitely wouldn't have trouble with them as I went to high school and also in my senior years. The second thing about maths that many people get wrong is they think they can get by with just memorization, but it's 100% per focus on a pure understanding of the concepts. This is especially true for the harder questions, where it's not as simple as just knowing which formula to use and plugging numbers into the formula. You have to figure out how to solve the question first and then get to the stage where you will need the formula and also which formula do you actually use. If you are just memorizing formulas or worse, cheating in the tests by writing down the formula, that is not going to help you at all. You might have the formulas written down on your hand, but an Asian will know the formula like they know it like the back of their hand. This means when we get to harder questions where it's not so straightforward, we can focus all our effort into thinking how to solve the problem, rather than memorizing exactly what was that formula. Was it negative b or positive b here? The third thing about maths is practice makes perfect. You should be practicing questions around a concept until you are fully confident about it. Then, even after that, you should still practice that concept every one week, every two weeks, and every four weeks using something called space repetition to make sure the concept stays in your mind and you never forget it. This was something useful I learned from a high school maths teacher where he would give us weekly quizzes even though we just did these in our own time which had questions based on how far away they were from the concepts that we learned one week, two weeks and four weeks ago and he made them appear in such a way that we could use space repetition effectively to make sure we weren't forgetting any topics. The reason why Asians are so good at maths is they have a lot of practice doing this. Whereas most kids might not be doing much homework at all, Asian kids get so much homework, whether that be their school homework, or tutoring homework, or just additional homework their parents give them, most of this is mathematics related, and just doing questions over and over again until you're sick and tired and don't want to do maths anymore. However, I actually somewhat disagree with this mindset, and instead I would rather say practice until you've mastered the concept, and make sure you aren't going to forget it. But if you're doing way too much questions repetitively where you don't even need to think about it anymore, then that's just a waste of time. If, for example, you get a homework sheet with 100 questions, but it only takes you 10 questions to fully grasp and learn the concept, and you haven't gotten any of those wrong, then there's no real need to do the last 90 questions. However, if you are struggling, keep doing them until you've fully mastered the concept. Now, if you do all the questions, but you still haven't mastered it, then either you weren't getting enough homework or you didn't understand the concept fully, which means go back to the teacher and ask them to explain it again. There are a lot of videos online that explain concepts well, for example, Eddie Wu's YouTube channel 
or my maths teacher actually explains year 11 and year 12 topics on his channel, which is virtual B15. The fourth thing about learning mathematics properly is to revisit your mistakes so you make sure you never make them again. If you make a mistake once, that's bad enough, but at least it's forgivable because you are making that mistake most likely because you are encountering a problem for the first time. However, you better not make that same mistake again in the next exam. My Asian parents paid a lot of good money for tutoring services back in the day, and if I get something wrong, then get it wrong again even after I've supposedly learned it, then that just kind of makes them feel like I actually didn't learn anything and all that tutoring money is going to waste. In which case, I'd probably expect a nice ass whooping. So naturally, to get better at maths, don't disappoint your parents by showing them you can't learn from your mistakes. So after you figure out what your mistakes are, make sure you revisit them and analyze them, see where you went wrong, and make sure you don't make the same ones in the future. One of the good habits that I developed was to always revisit my mistakes no matter if it was an actual test, a practice test, or just homework exercises. I'd always mark my questions and the ones I got wrong I made sure to put a mark next to or circle so I would revisit those before an exam and make sure to redo those questions to make sure I didn't make those mistakes again after revisiting them and it means in the future I was less likely to make the same mistakes again. This fifth tip is something that you probably have never heard of before and it's really quite a bonus that will really help you be able to do the harder questions in your exams that you just have no idea how to do. And that method is to try different methods when you're practicing on the harder questions you approach. Trying different methods and multiple approaches was something I learned from a mathematics tutor who did competition maths and Olympia level maths training. Let's say you have a hard problem in your homework or a practice test that you're doing. Even after you get one method to do it correctly, let's say even if you struggled a lot to get that one method, Keep thinking, see if there's another approach. After you find another approach or another way to think and go about the problem, then you can see why one method worked better in terms of this question compared to the other method. And you'll get a feel for which type of method to use for similar questions later on and which type of methods are best suited to which types of questions. This means when you do get stuck in a real question later on in the real exam, then even after trying to find a solution that doesn't work, and just end up getting nowhere, at least it means you can try another approach that you might have attempted before in the past on a different type of question and see if that yields any results, rather than just being stuck there and doing nothing but twiddling your thumbs. This gives you more chances to find the approach that will get you to the correct solution for a very difficult problem, and it also helps to sharpen your problem solving skills and creative thinking ability. You can also get a feel of which methods will become more efficient, and this will sometimes give you shortcuts for other problems and save you time during exams, so you have more time to work on the harder problems later on. And harder questions is also where the first four points come in. If you barely know the formulas and had to memorize them on the bus ride to the exam, then you're pretty far behind already. Once you get a difficult problem, there's very unlikely that you'll be able to do it, as you're even struggling to just memorize the formulas. Which one should I use? Wait, was it this formula? What was that formula again? Whereas for most Asians, they don't need to waste their brain power thinking of which formula to use. All the formulas is like a dictionary stored in the back of their heads because they've done so much practice, they've probably done millions of questions on just one single formula, and they know it without having to think about it. This means they can conserve all their brain power to just tackling and finding solutions to that problem and not worry about which formula to use. Rather, when they get to the stage where they use a formula, they just write it down without even thinking. A quick disclaimer though, not all Asians are like this, and most Asians out there actually have a life outside of studying, unlike me, who's still talking about maths in his YouTube videos even though I've graduated high school for a few years now. So just don't be racist and go stereotyping all the Asians out there. However, I do hope you guys did learn something about learning maths in a more entertaining kind of way. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a big like down below and subscribe to this channel to not miss out on my future study content where I give more educational tips on mathematics and other subjects, as well as money and university life. As always, take care and I hope to see you guys in the next video.